Another movie review. If you guys have been watching the channel for a long time, most of you want to see food review content, but I mostly have been doing movie reviews. So we are doing yet another movie review here in the bunker. Recently, I finished re-watching the extended DVD editions of the Peter Jackson's directed Lord of the Rings. I had seen Return of the Kings three times in theaters during my high school time, and it was time to watch The Hobbit, which was originally one 1937 novel by Tolkien, and then Peter Jackson stretched it out into three films. And so I had only seen this one, which we're going to talk about today in theaters. It came out around Christmas of 2012, right before I got married, coincidentally enough. And I remember being underwhelmed by it then because of I had such high expectations because of these three films. Now, these particular films were core memories of my high school time, and these are all five out of five films with Re Return of the King winning Best Picture. I think it won an 11 Academy Awards. <sighs> and then we get into The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, which we're going to talk about today in depth. I, I wanted to give this a better score, but my memory from back then did not deceive me. My feelings had not changed. This particular grouping of films had innovative CGI for the time. But it was not an overuse. I feel like they used it when they needed to do really big fantasy stuff, but then a lot of it was still real shots in nature and so on and so forth. This film, circa 2012, is heavily laden with the overuse of CGI, in my opinion. But it did... It was enjoyable, but it just wasn't as good as I felt. And then when I read into it, it made sense. So let's talk about this two hours and 49 minute runtime directed by Peter Jackson. This film costs between 203 million dollars to 200 and 300 million dollars to make and it grossed 1.017 billion worldwide at the box office. So commercially it was a huge success and I remember they even came out with a whole bunch of Lord of the Rings toys at the time, Legos, action figures, the whole shebang. It was adapted from the 1937 novels. There was a bunch of people that worked on the screenplay, including Peter Jackson, Philippa Boyens, Guillermo del Toro was going to originally direct this particular The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. And he worked on the project for two years and then he walked away in 2010, leaving Peter Jackson to step back in and scramble. And they basically shot all these films back to back just like they did the other films and he said that he really struggled with this because of Jackson kind of left everything unfinished and then he had to step in and just kind of winged it as he shot the pictures and that kind of showed I don't know maybe not I just he said that it wasn't he never felt on top of the game is the note that I took from online and that wasn't necessarily my beef with it like I thought it was okay but I just think when you're, I just kept measuring it up. And even when I saw it, I kept measuring it up to the original films that came out in the early 2000s. And this, to me, there was some good scenes, but it just wasn't blowing my socks off. So I just can't explain it. I wasn't like, it wasn't like a comfort food that you go back to. Like for me, I watched it okay. I like how they tied it into the original ones in the very beginning with some of the original people. And then obviously Ian McKellen's in it still as Gandalf. Great. But did you need to stretch one, one book out into three films to milk it for all it's worth? Maybe they just wanted to go that in depth. I don't know. Because of these ones, they just did one book per movie. One, you know, they, they kind of did that. But this one, maybe it was too much. I don't know. So at first I was in the low threes, but I think I'm going to settle on three and a half out of five on this particular film. Rotten Tomatoes is at 64%, so really wasn't successful with the critics at all. IMDb a little bit better, 7.8 out of 10. And Google users, maybe as time has gone by, because here we are 11 years after the fact, 
Google users are at 84%, so maybe this movie is better than I'm giving it credit for. It's still, I really love the way he directed this film. It's still like the visuals and everything, the way that Jackson lays out his shots and captures light. It all feels very reminiscent of the, of the earlier films. And I do feel like it does a good job kind of tying it. I do like to see the kind of the dwarf story and like the origin story of how Bilbo got the ring from Gollum. But I just think overuse of CGI, and it just didn't capture my heart like the original three. And maybe I shouldn't compare it to the original three. So next up, we are probably going to review the next in the series, which is the Battle of the Five Armies, which comes right after the first film. So not too much more to say on this. I like Jackson as a whole. I just feel like maybe they shouldn't have tried to stretch one book out into three films. Who knows? Until next time, we'll see you then.